Elizabeth, I've locked my keys in the shop again. You do know you could go around the tarp and get them. I'm at a point on my block wall in the shop where I really can't go any higher without some platform to work off of. It's just too uncomfortable to try to lift blocks over your head and you just can't get a good job that way. Sometime back my neighbor had offered up some scaffolding that he has up in a barn on his place and told me to go get it whenever I needed it. So that's what I'm going to do is take a quick ride up my neighbor's driveway, which is a beautiful ride if I do say so myself and pick up some scaffolding, try to make my life a little easier and safer. So around my area, you see these barns just dotted all over the place. A lot of them are in pretty bad shape. Tobacco farming on the small scale kind of went out years ago, and a lot of these barns kind of got in disrepair, and a bunch of them are starting to fall down. This one's obviously no different. You can see how bad it's leaning. And my neighbor did mention to me that he was thinking about trying to shore this thing up. I don't know how far he would take the repair, uh, seeing as it is a very old barn, but. You know, a lot of good memories as a kid playing in these things, and you just hate to see them go. So I'm out here getting the scaffolding set up, and I, I wanted to talk to the guys who've never used this stuff before. I know it looks can look cumbersome to set up. You know, by the time I get the scaffolding set up, I could have done the job off of a ladder. Well, a lot of people get killed on ladders, and I assure you this stuff probably sets up much quicker and easier than you think. There's no, at least for this set, there's no tools required, and almost every set that I've ever used, they're designed to be put together by hand and also taken down. Push and lock, you know, spring pins and wing nuts. This probably took five minutes to set up. By the time I walked to the house, got a ladder, I could have had this assembled. All the parts, like this walkboard, I mean, you'd think that'd be heavy, but probably weighs, I don't know, seven pounds maybe? Nothing. So if you've got a job to do on your house or something on a window, and 
you know, you want a good stable platform to work from. <laughs> this stuff's designed for that. And uh, it's usually pretty cheap to rent. And you won't regret renting it, I guarantee it. It's so nice to have somewhere to, to actually walk on instead of hanging onto a ladder with one hand up high. This stuff's great. So rent you some if you have a job that requires working at heights. Unfortunately, I had to set this stuff up with the boards long ways. Um, this stuff's rectangular, and I don't have, I can't turn it the other way. It won't fit. So I have to use it like this, which is fine. Not as good as it would be the other way. So let's take a second to talk about this flowable backfill material that I brought in last week. And I'm really happy with the way that this stuff turned out. It, it really, I think, was one of the best options in my situation for backfilling the trench that I had here, which was two feet deep from the top of the old earth, and uh, some places only a foot wide with rock overhangs that would have been near impossible, in my opinion, to get compacted well using you know, your typical compactor and uh, you know earth or or stone so this stuff poured in it filled all those voids and set up uh, similar to concrete although it's not as hard as concrete you could actually dig this uh, stuff with a matic so if you need their water line or something put in you could you could still do that it's not impossible to dig this stuff so you can actually dig at it with your fingernail and start breaking it up so it tells you about how how hard it is so wasn't cheap not quite as much as concrete well i don't know it's close uh, imagine what a full truck of concrete cost well, that's about what this is for me it was 900 us dollars for eight yards of this material which because of this stuff is so wet that's all the truck will hold is eight yards it'll hold 10 yards of concrete but only eight yards of this stuff so was it worth it i think so um considering the alternative bringing in dirt by hand or stone by hand because I had no access, it would have been by a wheelbarrow and trying to compact this uh, and then wondering, you know, how good a job you got. Uh, this really takes some of the question out for me and uh, I'm happy with it. I'd suggest it to anybody. A lot of people ask, what is it made of? So I grabbed some of it and uh, before it got stiff, I'll show you. I got it on a board over here. So I grabbed a handful of this stuff and washed it out in a bucket of water so I could see you know, what it consisted of and it's mainly river sand at least that's what this looks like it, it looks like anyway same stuff that i picked up in the truck a couple weeks ago and it also contains a fly ash coal ash from coal fired power plants it could contain a plasticizer but i'm not for sure on that uh, maybe the coal ash makes this stuff flow better i'm not exactly for sure um, and then obviously it's going to have some cement in it to make it stiffen but the main component is river sand at least that's what it looks like to me anyway.
So I've got four more rows to do on the back wall and I'll be finished. I'm trying to at least get one more row done tonight. I've got a visitor showing up. A lot of you guys will, will know who it is. My buddy Al, uh, the gentleman who helped me. <laughs> He's a good guy. He helped me dig this footer, helped me dig out from beside the shop. Uh, you know, viewer of the channel, really nice guy. Anyway, he's got business he's doing up north of me, not too far, and he decided he would swing by and see the progress because last time he was here, we just had a hole in the ground, and that's not been that long ago. So he wants to see um, in person the progress. Anyway, he also had some eight-foot lumber for a project that he was doing at his house that ended up didn't ha that can't happen. So instead of letting that lumber ruin, he said he would bring it to me, which is nice. Now, at the moment, I'm thinking ten-foot lumber on this lower wall to the roof. That's That was my plan. But uh, all I'll have to do, well, yeah, all I'll have to do is add one more row of blocks and I can use eight foot lumber. So it may work out actually really good. And plus, eight foot lumber would be great. I mean, if my blocks come up to waist level, that'll give me three blocks above grade, or above the floor. So it'll be nice. I think that'll work out better than my original plan. So we'll see. I'll show you when Al gets here. I'm going to try to get one more row done before that happens. So you know mason uh, work or stonework has been around ever since the cavemen, I'm sure. Maybe even just as long as the people have existed. You know, one guy was stacking up rocks and made himself a decent home. And the other guy down the valley seen him and said, Hey man, come stack up me some rocks. And there, the mason trade was born. <laughs> Crazy to think of, but you know it's probably true. Something, something like that, anyway. Sorry. Well, look who it is. Mr. Steve. Hello, Al. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? All I can say is 
I love the roads with lines. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh. How was your trip? It was uh, interesting. I had my first flat tire in 20 years. Really? Uh, on this on this guy? Yeah. Front or back? Here. That one right there. Inner, inner one. Uh, trucker actually flagged me down. Waved his CB at me, so we got on the CB, and he's like, ah, your inner tire is kind of just flopping around in the air. I'm like, oh, I'm on 94, about 40 miles outside of Milwaukee. Yeah. Wow. So I got off, got to a mobile station, and five hours and $600 later. You're on the road again. I'm on the road again. Yes. Uh, what are you doing? I'm good. Well, my, my buddy Al knew he was bringing some lumber, but uh, he brought me a bunch of shingles as well, which I wasn't expecting at all. But I never know what to expect with Al, to be honest. So, looks like me and me and Kane are going to be unloading a bunch of shingles. That's nice. Conditions themselves. It's uh, they, when the Society of Industrial Engineers gives us a D plus or a C minus or D plus for our infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can we take this and put this halfway? I Will it work? Mm. Yeah, I got to jack it up. I got I got to actually lift the truck up. Oh really? We don't have to do that. No, it's just push button. You done did your butt in there, sir. That is. Uh, it, it 
It's amazing what? the difference between when I, when I left and where I was now. Dang. It's moved forward, yeah. You're, really, you're, you're making leaps. You're being the gazelle and taking great leaps. Yeah. Look what you broke. I didn't break it. It just flips up. You better hope it flips up or out. You get older. That's to keep your pallets from rolling off the, yep. the deck. Yeah. Pal yeah. The pallets are out. So moving all these shingles by hand was definitely a job, as any roofer can probably attest. And the hotter it gets, the looser these bundles of shingles feel, kind of like a cooked spaghetti noodle. It just, that weighs, I don't know, 30 to 50 pounds, I'm guessing. A lot of weight. This was 80 bundles of shingles. And uh, we didn't move them that far, but it was far enough, in my opinion. And when the time comes to put these things up on the roof, I'm not going to be packing them up a ladder. Uh, <laughs> That's something you only do if you have to. I'll rent a piece of equipment or something before I carry these things up a ladder. I learned my lesson. <laughs> Just unloading these things from the truck was tough. Now you can say you've had your workout for the day. Yep. I've already had mine today. Well, there you go. Uh, I get two. You did. You're, uh, you got guns out and tons out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Hopefully, they'll work well for you. Oh, they'll work. I wouldn't care if every pack was a different color <laughs> on my roof. You know what I mean? It's not like they're going to be like, oh, Nobody will look see at them. this. Yeah. You got all kinds of... No one will see them. Just keep you. the water off. That's all you need to do. Yep. Where did that big pile of shingles in my truck go? Dang it. Gone. And the wood! There was wood in there too, I remember. Yep, gone. Huh. All gone. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> that is a heavy pallet, Al. That is 80 bundles of shingles. That would be, uh, oh, I'd figure it out, but that's thousands of pounds. Oh, Lord, yeah. Your ground is going to be very well compacted <laughs> there. <laughs> You're a daredevil. So Al told me he was bringing some 2 by 6s that he had left over from a project of his, but I wasn't aware it was going to be this many 2 by 6s This is enough, should be enough, well, it is enough, to frame up the long wall that I need to do in the shop, which is awesome. Uh, this is 8 foot lumber, so I will have to add a row of blocks, which is well worth it, I think. Uh, in my wall, you know, it'll come up three blocks off the floor instead of two blocks, which is fine with me. Um, these are not, this is some nice lumber, so that's awesome. Along with the stack of shingles, let me take you down there and show you those. So in the back of Al's truck, along with that lumber, he also had this massive stack of shingles. This is 80 bundles. These are three tab 20 year shingles. You can get shingles with a longer life, but they're quite a bit more expensive. And there's nothing wrong with a three tab shingle. People have been using these forever. And as long as you don't get bad, big winds in your area, these will last quite some time or hail can damage these pretty bad, but it'll damage any roof actually. These are white. Had I had the choice, I'd have probably went with a black shingle, but for the price I paid for these, white it is. You can't see my roof anyway. And maybe a peanut and walnut will see it, but or somebody in a helicopter. But other than that, you can't see it. So, well, white roof it is, and three tab shingles it will be. So thank you, Al. I appreciate that, as you can imagine. So in case you're wondering what I meant by three tab, 
They're just, uh, the way that the shingle's designed, this is common. You see these on probably most homes, uh, unless you get in some of your nicer neighborhoods, they'll have the architectural type, which are, you know, look like, kind of like uh, actual uh, shingles. These are an actual shingle. So I'm going to quickly check the run and rise of this shop roof. I've never checked it before, so I don't know exactly what it is. I'm just curious. And to, to check it, I'm going to use this carpenter square. You can use the speed square as well. Carpenter square, my magnetic level. I'm going to use the inside of the square. I'm going to come from the 12 inch mark, 12 inches from this inside leg, so 12 inches. And I'm going to set that 12 inch mark I can do this and not fall. Out on the lip, the outer lip of the tin roof. I'm going to level the bubble in my level. Then I'm going to come up here on the vertical scale and I'm going to read that uh, measurement there. So this roof, for every one foot of run, I get four inches of rise. So it's a one and four. Just a quick and easy way to do it without any, any math at all. You hear that? There's a deer behind the shop. It's blowing. It's sounding the alarm for other deers. Alright guys, that's it this week. Man, huge thanks to my buddy Al. And I can't get over all the all the nice uh, deeds he's done and all that lumber that's enough to do this wall in fact you could probably put two to six studs on eight inch centers if you wanted to with all that lumber this wall i spent some of the week designing uh, you know what i'm going to do with this wall it's so long you can't not uh, easily anyway do it in one section and stand it up so i'm going to probably do this wall i'm thinking in four 10 foot sections and stand those up individually and then fasten them together. That's the idea anyway. Made pretty good progress, I guess, on my back wall. This past weekend was my wife's birthday, so we celebrated that. And, uh, you know, I just didn't didn't have as much shop time as I usually have. So I'm going to try to finish that up while you guys are watching this video, hopefully. Work on my front wall and get it. They can go all the way up now. And what else? I mean, you name it, there's a ton to do. Start maybe laying the row of blocks, maybe two rows, I don't know, maybe a cap. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be able to take this project farther than what I would have been otherwise, thanks to Al. So, and all the support. So I really appreciate it. Hopefully, hopefully it'll all show in the end. Um, and this will be a better product than what I even hoped it would be. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. Anybody who's supporting me on this project, it's obviously appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.